Jeff Ostros, Seed Agronomist with Cropland. And I want to take a couple minutes to discuss with you a couple things that you need to be aware of before you make your seed decision for 2022. Now, as you're driving around the countryside, you might see some areas of neighbor's fields or maybe even some of your own that look a bit tangled or uneven. It might be time for you to get out and have a look, grab a shovel, do a little digging to make sure that you don't have something chewing away at your yield that you're not aware of. So come on, let's take a walk with me out into the field here and we'll have a look at what might be affecting your upcoming seed decision. All right, so I'm gonna start off by letting you meet your pest. I'm gonna show you what the injury looks like. Then we're gonna discuss some control options. Beginning with the larvae on the left, these turn into the three different adult species shown in the pictures on the right, from your western, your northern, and your southern corn rootworm. These adults can be identified by the different colored markings on their backs. Let's have a look at the root injury caused by the larvae of these three different species. Note that numerous roots are missing from the nodes of the corn root. This feeding is the result of the larvae from earlier in the growing season. This brings me to the next point of the life cycle of corn rootworm. Understanding this can help you both identify do you have a problem as well as how to manage that problem. And it really begins with understanding the overlap of both the larval stage and the adult stage. And understanding that it's the larvae that does the damage to the corn roots, not the adults. And although in the middle of the summer we tend to see the adults flying around, it's too late at this point in time to prevent any further injury to the crop other than possibly clipping of the silks. Successful control of this pest comes down to controlling the larvae. If you kill the larvae, you prevent the adults from forming. If you kill the larvae, you prevent them from feeding on and injuring your corn roots. So how do we manage this pest? We can start simply by crop rotation. Use of a soybean or a small grain is an excellent means to get ahead of this pest. You can also use traits in the bag to control your corn rootworm pressure. If crop rotation and traits in the bag aren't the route that you want to go, remember soil applied insecticides can be very effective at controlling corn rootworm also. Two last things to remember. Control your volunteer corn out in your soybean fields. Volunteer corn can act as a non-refuge host where corn rootworm can reproduce and lay eggs for the upcoming year's corn crop. Also, pay attention to university and industry corn rootworm trapping reports. This is a good way to predict what kind of pressure you will be looking at for the upcoming season. There you have it. Here are some beautifully mangled corn roots for you to look at to remember that when making your seed decisions for this coming season, pay attention to the pressure in your area when selecting hybrids, traits, and or insecticide use and management around corn rootworm. For more information on this, please reach out to your local Winfield United Retailer. <music>